Okay, so uh, you'll have to excuse me. I'm just going to see if I can get to the lovely folks that were waiting for me on the original stream, which I had to abandon because it was connecting to the wrong camera and there was no way I could get out of that except Oh, yes. There you go. <laughs> oh, dear. Hang on, I'll be with you in a sec. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Hello, Sahel. Hello, David. Hello, you made it. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the uh, the wonderful. Uh, yeah, that's a classic, isn't it? Um, what it is is I've got a laptop, and that has got an inbuilt camera. I don't use that. I use a, a separate uh, webcam up the top here because I have you know a keyboard plugged in and stuff. And uh, YouTube decided to uh, go to that other camera, which is now sitting there rather wonderfully. So hang on, just bear with me one second, because there's no point in that still being there. And I think if I just do this, I can, I'll be with you in just a second. I know it's a fab. Just gonna pop that to private so we don't have that sitting around. Okay. So, whoa. Interesting. Hello, JF. Hey, it is, it is, it is working. Can you hear me all right? Can you, can you guys hear me okay? I'm going to assume that you can. <laughs> it's one of those days. Oh, uh, go on, tell me, is it working? Hello, Julie. Good. I'm going to assume that it's working. JF, tell me. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you'll also have to put up with my dog Jasper in the background. Great, okay, here we are, five minutes late. Do you know what? Good, thanks, Sahar. Uh, good, thank you. It's such a delay on the uh, on the text, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? The other thing is, you know, when I was um, uh, running my own video production company and, ru and running conferences and things like that, um, th this sort of technical uh, cock up uh, would be, you know, would be would be the nightmare. Really, would be the nightmare. But what can we do? It is just what it is. So, look, really interesting one today. Had um, some interesting questions come in over the last couple of weeks. And um, what I want to do is the usual thing. We'll plow on in. Um, <laughs> yeah, we love Jasper too, but he can be a quite quite a pain. But uh, he's he's having a bit of a lie down now so that's okay we're going to run through some things here um and i think as usual it's, it's always quite interesting to see how the different questions that come in uh, before the actual live they do tend to have a sort of a theme running through them and um i think today will be none the different none the none no different to that um you know I, i'm going to start jenny jenny's on uh with us today and um bless her um we've done lots of work together uh, jenny and i over the years and uh, in fact uh, jenny is responsible for us all sitting here and i think i've said this before because she bought me um these um son and the serpent the book by hamish miller so she, jenny introduced me to hamish miller um and we were discussing on email um about uh, stuff and manifesting and creating our reality and uh, we got round to basically the Extinction Rebellion movement that's going on at the moment. And, you know, uh, that's very much a, a physical manifestation of, a, of internal term, you know, turmoil, internal turmoil. That's what I'm trying to get, get to. And everything that we do really on this channel is built around that process of spirit energy, if we call it that, working from the inside out. And really the Extinction Rebellion is, uh, is absolutely an, an appropriate reaction from, the, from everybody uh, that, is care, that cares about our seeming external 
world. And of course, really, the external world is the world within. So it's it's a reflection of the conflict within. But it also means that we are, as a collective, addressing the internal conflict. And change is never, ever, ever, ever easy. And this is this this and Jenny, bless her, that got me thinking about all of this side of things. Um, and you know, I actually I, I got right round to questioning. Well, what am I doing when I when I speak to all of you? Hi, Marjorie, good to see you. Um, yeah, we got it sorted. Didn't we? Um, you know, when 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 we when, when any of us stand up and sort of start to talk about our spiritual beliefs, and uh, we share what are basically very very private things, our attitude to life. Our connection to God, the creator, the universe, is an incredibly personal thing. And so therefore, you know, every one of us that stands up and does it, and I you know, know from hello Joseph, good to see you. And I know from you that I can see the names of on the on the chat there. That a lot of you are doing that at the same time as well, and you know, to differing degrees. And it can be incredibly painful. And it certainly is a path that means we have to examine what we believe and what we encounter, and does what we encounter fit in with what we, up to this point, believe. And it really is one of these things where the classic archetypes of existence come into play, because we know that the simple structure of a story and our lives are structured like a story, whether we like it or not. There is a narrative that takes place from our birth to our stepping through to the next world. And these issues that the, the hero of a narrative, of a story, of a film encounters, they are always encountering barriers, obstructions, obstacles that are greater and greater and greater to the path, to the journey that that hero or heroin, but let's call him hero because it's a classical term, is taking. And so we find that in life coaching too, don't we? You know, we find that clients get to these breakthrough points. They're, they're facing the obstacles and they have to confront the fears. They have to overcome the obstacle to move on. And it's happening for all of us. It happens to us on an individual level and it happens now. We can see it and we can see it in things like Extinction Rebellion as a movement through the masses because we as a species are facing an obstacle. We have to decide what we're going to do about it. And those that are actively taking part in Extinction Rebellion, move, you know, um, protests are actively making choices and declaring their choices. And that's absolutely fine and quite frankly if i lived in the south i might do something about it but equally <laughs> i could accuse myself of apathy but please i'm not really going down that route i think that there is a um there is a path and a place for each of us in in this whole mass of change that we're experiencing and do you know what this brought me right round to was the fact that what i do here is to encourage as many of you as possible to simply do the simplest of things, which is a, the spiritual exercise of literally working with that spiritual subtle energy, which is around you. And when I ask you to go and find the earth energy power center in your own homes, it is because I want you to experience the actuality, the effect that your own inner energy your heart and mind has literally on the world around you and if we had seven billion souls understanding the power of our inner energy and the mind and matter connection which is demonstrated by this dousing technique then the world would change without doubt because this world is not what it seems so I feel like uh, that is underlying everything that we're going to talk about today. And it's perhaps a little bit serious as a platform to start with. And also, I think it kind of reflects the technical issues that we had to start with, too, which is my conflict within. What am I getting at? What I'm getting at is 
so there's a place for outside movement there's a place to to take to the streets and to join that kind of riotous movement to cause disruption to cause uh uh change in that way but even more so even more so because i'm not advocating take to the streets and riot just point that out for google um even more so the spiritual practice of looking within and seeing where the conflict is within each of us and seeing the work we need to do within and then we make the choice about how we want to step forward right anyway this was not supposed to be about extinction rebellion but it is about me trying to make it very very clear the importance of that simple act of expressing your heartfelt connection and your heartfelt gratitude and your heartfelt love for the external environment in which we live but literally the power center in your own home now we step on from that and we start to talk about the personality that we can meet when we start to access that sort of energy and moving one step from the power center from the discovery of the earth energy and, and mapping the earth energy and feeling at home with the earth energy the flows of subtle electrical acti activity because that's what it is within our own home our electrical field interacting with the electrical field of the earth that's what earth energy is hi good to see your memory bubble and we step on from that and we can create a personal individual personality driven connection to spirit bearing in mind that we are simply packets of energy ourselves right? we've said this so many times so when we talk about spirit we are just talking about packets of energy but a slightly different form it's all just about the information exchange so when we start to talk about and i've got a, the reason i'm talking in in these terms giving some background here so the way we're kind of moving forward is because we've got very specific questions about spirit guides and a lot of these questions well some of these questions are about fear and um i am fearful personally of introducing you and encouraging you ah keith you're cooking too great excellent if my wife was online she would be cooking as well she's a great cook my fear is that i introduce you to spirit energy and then you get carried away with it you get taken off with it you you access energies that you're not comfortable with that's my fear but i feel obliged to introduce you to this energy and to give you all the warnings and the fair process in order to do it safely and therefore you can gain the advantages from interacting with it and shifting your perspective because that's all all it is doing is shifting your perspective on everything on every issue that comes up on every aspect of your life and i know that because that's what it's done for me so i know this stuff helps and that's why i say that this is helping us all move towards well-being and cooking clearly so <laughs> Now, I know that's kind of that's kind of started off on a quite a serious note. Um, and there's a touch of my guide coming in there as well. Uh, and he's never one that is particularly light and cheerful and, and happy. He always has some serious words to say because it's a serious business. Or rather, it's a serious issue to simply understand this concept that the world is not what it seems. Nathan, yeah, hi, mate. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> yeah, every week, every week. Yeah. Nah. You really must start a new channel, Nathan, because it's going to get me every time. So, I mean, again, you see, this is funny. It's really nice that Nathan has uh, uh, cropped up there with that issue on the text, right? Because what we what what we deal with um, a lot of the fear about working with spirit is how do i know that this spirit that i'm speaking to that i'm dousing with that i'm getting responses from that i can feel is genuine 
and has the genuine and says, you know, it is who they say they are. So there's Nathan with a name, Keith Kerwin. And so Nathan is not being who he says he is. I mean, in the nicest way possible way, I'm using it as an example. He's a lovely guy. So <clears throat> what I'm saying is, so we can, how do we tell when a spirit is has genuinely our best interests at heart. Well, how do you tell when you meet somebody new? How do you tell when you develop the relationship with somebody new? Let's put it into a romantic context. How, you know, when you fall in love with somebody, you don't, well, I mean, sometimes you fall in love with them head over heels as soon as you meet them, but it's not so common. And therefore you spend that time getting to know somebody and realizing how much you really do love them, how much those, you know, Let's not go there because that'll get me upset, Saha. So, <clears throat> um, uh, I mean, your relationship to your departed. So, it's a process of getting to know the spirit guide that you actually have with you, that your presence, that you have acknowledged and that you've started a conversation with. It's not something, none of this work is something that can necessarily be done like overnight it's it takes practice and it takes a certain degree of uh, confidence to step forward um, but all the time spirit if they're genuinely a spirit energy that is is one of your guides or is the guide of the of the house is spirit of place or is the guardian of the en energy of this house they will never rush you they will never force you to do things. They will never suggest you do things you're not comfortable with because they have all the time in the world. And they know that whatever you need to be doing, whatever you need to be talking to them about or learning from them about, if it doesn't happen in this lifetime, it'll happen in another one. So for a start, spirit is never, ever going to force you, never, ever going to rush you. Hi, Carol. Good to see you. There, Maria, there, don't worry. Good to see you both. So that's one way of telling whether the spirit energy that you're talking to genuinely has your best interests at heart. Excellent. Now, don't forget that all of our perceptions are going to differ from one person to another. Memory bubble there. Okay, so memory bubble there describing this purple haze and drifting away. I used to see a lot of kind of smokiness, uh, mistiness in a, in a room um, when Jane was about, but that's what it was. It wasn't nice, pretty colors. It was just kind of like a mistiness. Um, that was the guardian energy in the old house. Uh, I've never seen the colors and stuff. JF, what if you need a little push? Well, they will do it nicely. You know, it's not, and you, it's not about you feeling pressurized okay so um yes it does joseph as far as i'm aware it does now if you speak to my uh good friend adrian he would say well not necessarily but in my experience it does every house that i interrogate for the for the reports the subtle energy reports i've always found the guardian energy of the, of the place and through all those years from meeting jane well through to now when you go outside we've talked about this several times when you go outside you go to a sacred site you'll always find a guardian energy there they may not wish to be very communicative and in which case they will say so if you ask you always ask permission to speak to them and they may say no and that happened to me on several occasions you know, I've been to sacred sites and I've said, may I speak to the guardian energy of the place? And they said, no. You say, well, fine, fair enough. May I enter? Yes. So you just enter and just be respectful. Joseph. Well, um, it, 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 well, it varies. I mean, the guardian, it, 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 it depends, Joseph. It really does depend because, you know, there's so many things that could be involved in that action of the house being destroyed. Now, guardian energies, guardian aspects are, are going to be linked to source. So they have a greater understanding. They have a better connection to the bigger picture than we do. 
And we are always looking at life from our human perspective. And this is part of the point of being able to shift your perspective, to look at it from a wider perspective, to get more of a, uh, an understanding of what the bigger picture is. So Joseph, really it would depend on the individual um, circumstance. I think it's highly unlikely that the guardian energy would not have been aware of the circumstance, would not have been aware of what was going to happen and would have moved on back. If there's not a, if there's not a, um, a property for it to be looking after, so with people living in it, then it isn't going to be there. There's no need for it. Every space has three aspects. You have the spirit of the land itself. We'll go back and talk about these in a sec. Spirit of the land itself, the guardian energy personality, and the spirit of the fabric of the building itself, right? So there's three aspects to it. Spirit of the land is about the energy of the land. That will always be there, no matter what happens on the surface, no matter what we do, what animals do, whether it's covered in water, the spirit of the land still exists. It's not a very conversational spirit. You're not going to get a lot of information in a conversation from that spirit. Guardian energy personality, absolutely, that's the one to talk to. It's the guardian energy personality looking after the space. Hello, Summer. Looking at the space, doing in a way what we should be doing, what we do on the physical realm of looking after the space. The guardian energy personality is doing it in that etheric energy, in that spirit energy, whatever those layers are in there. And then there's the fabric of the building itself, so the fabric of the house. It has its own personality, like a car has its own personality that you can speak to, like a, a dousing water, like a mug. Everything has a consciousness. Everything can be accessed. It's just that some things like stones, like rocks, will take a long time to answer you and they're not very communicative. So the best bet with a guardian energy of the space is, it is the one to speak to, to speak to the guardian energy of the space the personality there, you can have a conversation with it just like us, because it's just like us. It's manifested, but on a different vibration, okay? So, um, right, this first question, this first question, I'm gonna get on to a question from David, if David can bear with us, I'll, it'll come, I'll come to that one in a minute, but this is the first question from Carol. And this actually is really interesting because this, some of you may have seen that uh, Doreen Virtue, who for a long, long time was a, a you know, um, a, a massive uh, selling uh, uh, author, working with angel cards and all sorts of stuff and giving messages from the angels and things like this. Um, I had a question in from Carol saying, I regularly watch, uh, um, I know you always talk about using protection, et cetera, and working to the highest good, but do you have anything to say about Doreen Virtue's opinion that dousing, tarot, et cetera, are demonic? I don't understand why she would now think that her life's work should be destroyed and that she was deceived. So what Carol is basically saying is that Doreen Virtue has now uh, become uh, what we would commonly call a born again Christian. She has adopted Jesus. She has brought Jesus into her life. And um, Carol sent me a link to a video, a half hour video, where Doreen was talking about the reasons that she did that. What she was basically saying, I didn't watch it all, but I kind of got the gist of most of it, I think. What she was basically saying was that she had an education and was brought up in sort of new science, uh, new science Christian science sort of living uh, in the church of Christian scientists, which was saying that Jesus was just a man, just a man and not divine. Doreen last, uh, last year or a couple of years ago had a vision of Jesus and to her, her experience was that he was absolutely divine and was full of love and and therefore, I'm paraphrasing, but therefore Doreen felt that she should be following only Jesus and therefore devoted her life since then to gemming up on the Bible, understanding the Bible more. And one of the key things is, I don't think she actually referred to tarot dowsing and stuff like that as demonic. I think what she actually says, what she was actually going on about was it was idolatry. Now, idolatry is an interesting word. I had to look it up just to make sure. Idolatry is the worship of an idol or cult image being a physical image such as a statue or a person in place of God. In religions such as Christianity, Islam, Judaism, idolatry connotes, connotes or indicates the worship of something or someone other than God as if it were God. And that's broadly what Doreen Virtue was saying was that in using her 
Um, yes, she may well have been, Kathy. I know it's uh, occurred to me. Hello, Lawrence. Good to see you. Oh, hello, thoughts and perceptions out loud. Nice to see you. Lovely. Um, uh, Marilyn. <laughs> Great. Good to see you there. So what Doreen is really sort of saying is that she used to use the cards and was separating them from God. Okay. So she felt that she was actually using the cards and using angels in a replacement to God, which I think was really interesting because uh, uh, in, in none of this sort of answering of Carol's uh, query, am I putting Doreen down? She is entitled, like the rest of us are, to our, her own opinion. And that is crucial, of course. This is why we were talking at the start with about the fact of what we believe and how I got to this position, right, of doing what I'm doing here. Because if Doreen Virtue or anybody feels that they are using it, things, let's pick up a dancing lord, using things in that replace the presence of God, to me, that doesn't fit with my belief, my personal belief system. That, to me, is as much God as I am, right? Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, because everything is God. Yeah, exactly, Jenny. Um, and, it, you know, as soon as we start to, whatever we, I mean, this is very, very difficult to explain in, its fullest terms and the full implications of what I'm trying to get at. Because what I'm trying to get at, I'll try anyway, is that, yeah, exactly, when you just said it, yeah, yeah there is no separation. I mean, you, gen, uh, thoughts and perceptions and Jenny are basically saying it. It's, 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 it, God permeates everything. Now, of course, <laughs> the, argue, the counter argument is, well, no, 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 that's new age thinking. But, Look, you know, to me, we're working, we're, everything we do, everything we're trying to do, um, yes, they are, they're an aspect, yin and yang, isn't it? You know, that dark little small darkness that we're always trying to move on from, trying to heal, trying to rebalance. But everything that we do, all of the healing work that we do, all the work that we do as self-development work, that we're trying to put ourselves into these positions and move on from these barriers that we're trying to overcome these obstacles that we're moving over around through under in order to progress on our path on our life narrative the story these are all aspects of god in themselves i mean god, i mean using the word god I, you know blimey a few months ago i don't think i even used that word because it's the universe consciousness everything and we're doing everything from the greatest good we're always looking for the highest possible vibration to connect to to source if people think what we're doing if you feel uncomfortable you know this is the bottom line if you feel uncomfortable you don't do it don't do it so if by considering ah oh, well you know during virtue used to be what well, was a very respected um uh, new age advocate and now she is saying, no, this is all wrong. And to be fair, I don't think she is saying, don't do it. She's, she's kind of saying, it's up to you. But she's putting her argument across. If you feel that, oh, well, actually, Dory's got a good point. Uh, let me go and join that camp. Then that's actually up to you. But you need to do so with the understanding of the power of your belief system. All, that's what it is, isn't it? You know, fundamentally, everything that we experience is based upon what we believe. If we believe the truth, if we believe the truth is that there is something here solid, let me pick up a cup, that that is solid. I believe that's solid because I spent 57 years being told that that's solid. Therefore, it exists because part of the oneness likewise what do i believe what do i think what do i process how do i invent the world in which i live it 
Interesting, Marjorie. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and uh, that's in, that's a nice way of putting it as well. Thoughts and perceptions, belief sparks the plasma. And I, I had a lovely exchange with a guy called Phil Francis, who um, looks at the world in a very scientific way. Uh, he left several comments on a, an old video of mine about dowsing. You've probably all seen it. And he was very much talking about the fact that what he says is, we think and our central nervous systems work by way of electricity, and electricity works through the earth. These are called telluric currents. We, we know that. This means our electromagnetic fields interact naturally, so there's no need to invoke zero-point energy, that's quantum stuff, or other neutrino atomic nuclei interactions. <clears throat> In the video that I was talking about, I was, I was talking about us connecting to the zero-point field, to the quantum realm, and I still think we do. Um, but what he's saying is that there is more and more scientific, in other words, logical thinking based on practical experiment that is indicating that our reality is very much about the electrical fields and the interactions of the electrical fields in every respect. It's as simple as. And what we will probably find is fundamentally most of our existence is I mean, our life force probably is electricity. We don't know. That's just speculation. We don't know. He didn't say that. <clears throat> so I think we'll move on from the Doreen Virtue issue. And Carol, if you're watching this on playback, um, I think really you just have to be aware that everybody, including me, on social media is trying to get your attention. And so you need to make up your own mind about what you believe and what really resonates with you. Because that is the world in which you will live. And as, I mean, it may not, it might not apply to you, Carol, um, but certainly to the, the younger generations, uh, as the world increases its use and reliance upon technology, then for sure, this issue is only going to get greater, that you absolutely, as an individual human being, need to pay attention to the individual barrage of information, your personal sensory input, not the elect not <laughs> electrical, yeah, there's a quandary, not the technological input that seems to be coming to you. Right? The difference is the technology. Hi, Carol. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Good to see you. Uh, so, um, it's been quite, it's not quite where I expected this to go today, to be fair. Um, I wasn't expecting to be quite so, uh, serious, but it's serious stuff, isn't it? It's serious stuff. Idolatry. No, I just, I don't think that idolatry applies. And I don't think personally, I think that what we have in the new age thinking, if we have to call it that, and I hate that expression, you know, it's just independent thinking, is that, um, is that, um, I forgot what I was gonna say, I got distracted by thoughts and perceptions. Uh, <laughs> completely forgotten. Just doesn't matter, um, I just wanna pick that up. Uh, no, 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 I like it. It's good. It's good that you're putting the stuff in and, and you're putting some really interesting thoughts out there. Um, I think that actually the awakening, uh, I don't think the phones and technology will go in the bins. I think, I, think, I, think, I think that you live quite remotely and close to nature. And I think that that's what's going to happen is that we're going to get this split. I think that there will be uh, a drive uh, uh, back out from a lot of the technology as more and more people become self-reliant and understand their own power. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> it's illusory. This is illusory. And we do not know. And the more of us come right back to how important it is for us all to be focused and aware through mindfulness of how we process information because we are co-creating this world and we have as much power to make it work for good but by our carelessness and our lack of attention and our lack of respect 
and the lack of regarding the ex regarding ourselves as well as everything else the two are linked anyway with uh, as sacred objects then that's why we end up in the mess that we're in but through this process of change we need to regain that sacred aspect just saying somebody's just saying okay let's move on let's move on david 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 let's get on to yours before we uh <laughs> disappear into uh <laughs> linden hi they uh linden let's just answer that one for you um uh, archangels um everything needs to be treated with respect um there's um there's no don't, don't uh yeah you have a natural respect use the natural respect that comes to you you have a humility and therefore that is entirely appropriate they do not expect they are not egotistical they do not expect reverence but the state of the state of respect and say and regarding things as sacred puts us into a position a mental state to be able to bridge to their energy do you see if we if we're disrespectful then we're in a low, lower vibration and therefore we're not able to connect so much so well i mean again these phrases are really not appropriate but they're the ones that we have to use uh lawrence that's fine you know a lot of people use technology a lot of people use a handheld app to be dousing with i don't think i could do that but it doesn't matter you in all these things you have to be the master of the technology of the of the things that you want to use in the same way as talking to a spirit guide you don't just do what the spirit guide says you don't just do what the technology says or you don't be a slave to the technology in the way that it can be addictive and habit forming and influencing you without you realizing what it's doing bearing in mind that a lot of the time if we're talking about social media these platforms are built upon the processes that are used in gambling centers i mean literally it's addictive and we don't realize it moving on so david says he purchased a pendulum and have found it incredibly responsive compared to the dowsing rods great uh, as he's been experimenting and asking more questions it seems he's been maybe communicating with the spirit over time the spirit seems to be quite connected to him and he even suggested it was traveling on the plane with him to france that's fine that happens that's quite common at the weekend i decided to do a little more digging and have uncovered that this spirit is called pakik and lived in south america during the 1700s that's fine that's a backstory that's fine don't worry about putting too much emphasis or too much dependence upon the backstory that is giving you the character of the spirit in the same way as my backstory is that i was born in orpington and no i wasn't i was born in shepparton in 1962 that's part of my backstory whether it's important to you is up to you but don't give it too much credence so it doesn't really matter what matters is your is your interaction in the moment at the weekend i decided to do a little more digging i've uncovered that this spirit is uh, i've done that bit um she constantly tells me that she is here by choice and is happy etc etc she also tells him that he's on his seventh incarnation yes well in, uh, it would seem uh, that more and more that um we certainly are eternal beings so we have many many lives so the fact that a spirit will be telling you that yes you might be on your seventh you might be on your hundred and seventh you might be on your one thousandth and seventh it again is irrelevant um i i yeah some people kind of like get a bit i'm an old soul and they feel important because oh they must have learned so much but you know so doesn't matter whether you're a new soul or an old soul all this stuff's going on at the same time it's about the experience of the moment it helps sometimes if we have been uh, if we can connect to a past past life or a parallel life that can help in a healing situation there is no doubt that, that can help 
But really what I'm trying to get at here is when you're working with spirit and dealing with spirit, then actually a lot of the what we would consider to be everyday um, uh, things that we, we, we do put as important when we're talk, talking about being, they're actually less important. And what's more important is what, what, the, what the exchange means in the moment. If you spend five minutes dousing and talking to the guardian of sight, what does it feel like? What are they asking or what are they, how are they answering? What are, what are you gathering? What information are you learning about yourself, about the place, about the bigger picture? These are the important things, not necessarily about them as a character. But I understand that we do have to, um, we do have to look at uh, trying to build a picture of who we're talking to. And again, I think increasingly I'm drawn to these analogies of, <coughs> of uh, f filmmaking, storytelling because it's my background but again you know to create a character in a story then we need all this backstory we need this character information but actually when we're working with spirit what we're really going by is the heart connection because you'll know in your heart if actually there's something not quite right about this and that's when you start to ask questions of that or you back off you know if you ever feel this is not quite right. And if the, you know, if a spirit ever asks you to do things you're not comfortable with or, or uh, pushes you into situations, then you, you back off. Just back off, close down, walk away. Don't touch the dousing and stuff for a few days. Right? I mean, it's, it, it really is as simple as that. And ground yourself all the time. Ground yourself, ground yourself, ground yourself. And always do the psychic protection exercise, the chakra protection exercise that we've talked about many times, which is elsewhere on the channel. Always do that before you start dousing, just to be safe. So, still carrying on with David's question. Um, so, yeah, okay, so he's saying some other stuff there where it seems like the spirit gets quite excited. So what David's picking up on is the way that his... his um, his um, pendulum will react in a very excited way if if David's getting quite excited and you know there's a lot of humor in there. So what David's picking up on there is actually a an impression of a personality, um, a humor, the humor from the universe. And very often when we first connect to the universe, even before we've met a guide of any kind, then we can quite often hear the, the humor in the universe as we're doing things which actually to them seem to be pretty silly or you know, maybe to us even seem pretty silly in retrospect. So don't ever be afraid of that humor that is in the universe. And don't ever be afraid if some, if a spirit or your pendulum appears to be, um, uh, um, thanks Kimberly, great, excellent. Put a link in there, can you do that? I don't know, I don't know whether you can. Um, if a spirit appears to be laughing, you know, as long as it feels okay. Right. Uh, it happens, it happens, uh, thoughts and perceptions. Um, I have, I have, I have had, I have, I, I was, yeah, I have. Um, I was pinched on the bum, believe it or not, by Jane. It was, it was an in-joke, it's fine. Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, you can be, um, uh, and I mean, when you, this is the thing, you see, if you get, if you get, um, if you get spirits or should we say, let's use the G word, let's use ghosts. If you get ghosts that are unhappy, I um, mean, they're spirits, aren't they really? You know, then they can manifest as close to the physical, uh, dimension as possible. And they can interact on that physical level. I mean, again, I mentioned my wife earlier on, she was actually pushed out of, uh, out of bed um, in a house that she was staying with um, decades ago. But that was a really freaky experience, but she literally felt her felt this person's hands and feet on her back and pushed her, rolled her out of bed. Um, so that was a bit weird. Uh, that was before we were into any of the spiritual stuff. Um, so David's question is, how can he tell that, A, this is a genuine spirit and not just his subconscious mind playing tricks, or if it's a genuine spirit, it has good intentions of telling the truth? I think, actually, David, we've covered that. I think that's the point. I think we have covered that. Um, not just your subconscious mind playing tricks. Well, that's one that you have to kind of get used to. 
there, I, I spent years thinking, did I just make that up when I was having interactions with Jane? And the, what you'll notice probably is um, that you will feel as though when you're dousing and talking to the spirit that is there, that you you dive into this space in your head. You, you know, your interaction with that spirit will be in a very kind of enclosed space. And when you come out, it'll be like, oh, yeah, OK, back, back to here we are. And that's when you think, oh, did I just make that up? Because when you're in that space, when your mind, when your brain waves are in that communication mode, then you believe it, you go with it. Of course you do. It's only when you back out and you and they, these come back to monkey chapter state that you think, oh, hang on. Oh, I think I just made that up. So how do you tell? Well, you practice and you see and the great thing is to always be mindful of how you feel and you will identify when you actually are making stuff up in terms of what we would call classic imagination so when you do create it has a different feeling to receiving information we've talked a little bit about that before um Yeah, I mean, and, and and David finishes off with, he finds it all very fascinating, but he doesn't want to be inviting something into his house or mind that will have a negative effect. And that's absolutely right. And that's exactly as it should be. So you always question this stuff. It's not a question. None of this spirit work is about charging in going, yes, I found the answer to the universe and it's wonderful and it's lovely and it's fluffy and it's called love and it's called God. And it's called, it's, because we're never going to find <laughs> we're never going to find the answer to the universe you know we're not but working with the spirit energy as we said right from the start shifting your perspective on your own awareness is a way to improve well-being but you do it with logic as well and in fact anna Anna Smith left a comment uh, a week ago on one of them, and she just said that spirit guide info is guidance, not a steadfast rule. They can offer options that we have not thought of. And I agree with that completely, completely. Um, so I think that's the way to look at it. I, I, I still tend to say that spirit guides and spirit energy is a part of us. We are a part of it. It comes back to that interconnectedness of everything. Increasingly, I think there's less and less evidence or less and less emphasis that needs to be put on law of cause and effect. It's more about interaction. It's a state of being. Everything is a state of being. Excuse me, I've always got one here, one, one of those at some point during these lives. Um, so I'm going to come on to David Woods, a question of David that David Woods put uh, a little while ago. And it's not completely serious, although <laughs> if it falls in line with anything else we've been talking about, it will be. Um, what, uh, personally, thoughts and perceptions? No, I don't. No, I don't. Um, so, David, David Wood, would like to ask a question. What does your guide, what does my guide, Merlin, think about the image and perhaps expectations of a wizard image today? Would he be a Gandalf? And what is his role and other archetypes today? Wow. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Merlin described himself as an enigma in that the years that I was working with him and trying to find a good connection with him and working through all the doubts and fears. And the big thing that I had was oh, I didn't believe he existed. He's an enigma. It was his and he always will be an enigma. And part of that is because of the way that the image of Merlin has been treated over the years. There, there are two examples of, of wild men living in the woods from centuries and centuries ago. There's one in Wales and there's one in Scotland. 
both of whom lay clay, lay clay, lay claim to being Merlin. Now, Merlin was was first written about by Geoffrey of Monmouth, and it appears that he sort of drew on both, but mostly it seems the Welsh one. And that really, I think, is why I chose to use Merthyn as his Welsh name, uh, rather than address him as Merlin. I just couldn't bring myself to call him Merlin. <laughs> the other interesting thing about Merlin as an energy is that if we look him up on you know, Google, blah, 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 as, as one does, I did years ago, he, um, he also manifested, he had a lifetime as Saint Germain. So Holy Ascended Master Merlin is also uh, effectively Saint Germain. And Saint Germain, some years ago, was everywhere. You know, you couldn't move for people uh, saying that they were channeling Saint Germain. And this is part of the issue when we're working with energies like that, uh, is that they just don't correlate to our human experience of separateness and individuality. I can't answer whether he would be a Gandalf. Um, the archetypes are there partly because we structure them. They have a power. Jung, you know, was very keen on the archetypes, the power of the archetypes uh, in the subconscious. And, you know, we have to accept that we create, you know, the process of creation is a physiological process. It's not anything woo. It's not anything mysterious. I was going to say it's not anything woo woo. I mean, it, it's it's woo woo to a scientist, to a scientist, but it's not mysterious. You know, more and more, um, you know, the basic physiology and the basic psychology, the processes we have to attribute these. These are part of being human, and the, so therefore the power of the id of the the ancient mind is always present, and Merlin emerges from that. And he is connected to the, the ancient land. He is an energy of the land. And no more, you know, there has never been a time where we needed that energy of the land to step up and say, join me. Yeah, well, Saha. Um... <laughs> it's quite noticeable, isn't it, Lawrence? So... So how? Yes, um, there's Jane. Jane, um, okay, briefly, because we've got five minutes here. Jane, when, hmm, okay, there was a point at which I was learning to communicate with Merton. And he appeared in our house. Jane, okay, so let's go back one more step. Around the time that no, it's not, it wasn't. It was actually before. It was before I started to learn mediumship. Jane came up to me one evening. Her presence came up to me when I was watching telly. It used to happen a lot. She would come up and just start talking at me, mainly because I was just kind of zonking out and, you know, in that kind of mind. Uh, what would I say? Just that kind of chilling energy. She just came up and said, um, I'm going away. In a few days, I'm going away. But somebody else will be here taking my place. And I'm like, what? I'm going away for a few days, but somebody will be here to take my place. And sure enough, probably within the week, she went. I mean, I, I could go into the room where she would often be found and, and it could fit. she wasn't there. And then um, Nikki and I, my wife and I, used to talk to Jane on a Sunday morning quite often, just used to be a habit. Um, and we went into that room uh, on a Sunday, and there was a different feeling there, a different energy. And it was a male energy. And this was, uh, we, we, in the end, I think I've told this story before, but in the end, uh, this spirit announced himself. We, we decided that we would call him Mr. Eric. Now, Eric was a, an old cat of ours um uh, but anyway so i again at that time i said well i can't call you eric i'm going to call mr eric so anyway we then started this re relationship this dialogue with this male spirit but after a little while he went away and jane came back 
and there was no conversation. I, we didn't discuss why why did that occur. Now it seems a bit odd. Why why didn't we discuss? We just didn't discuss it. it. Just was like, oh, okay, you're back. That's great. That's nice to have you back. That's really nice. Mr. Eric was great, but he's very different. So, and then when I started learning uh, the mediumship, it was um, it was then very very obvious that the male energy, Mr. Eric had been Merlin and there was another story and I've, I've told it before I'm not going to go into it now but there was other evidence that Eric and Merlin were one and his feeling up to that time up to that time where well, his feeling was the same as that male energy so Saha does Jane uh, come through here well you see what happened was that when we left that house uh, Nikki and I went into the into the room that was hers, the, where she used to be, and we said a very tearful farewell. And just like spirit, she showed no emotion whatsoever. She just went bye. Um, uh, that was the day that we were moving out, and it was just like bye, and off she went. And that's very common for spirit just to leave. You probably know that for when spirit moves away from a house, if you do a clearing on a place and you you allow them to move through to the light. To continue their journey they will simply go without a thank you and shake of the hand or anything like that there's no kind of acknowledgement there can be a, like a wave or something but there's no kind of emotional attachment there and that's exactly what jane did she just went okay yeah you're off bye and she disappeared she she went like kind of into the distance in my mind's eye i just saw it just like a bet but go away and i was like still cut out i was really distraught about leaving her and leaving the house um but she was like no it's fine Long story short, a few months later when we were up north, I was meditating and felt a very, very familiar energy. And there she was. She came back, straight back through. And I'm like, what are you doing here? She said, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm here for you if you want. I'm here. And so she is constantly around. And in fact, I use her energy when I'm working with clients on the report and in the healing. I use her female energy to counterbalance Merthyn's male. I mean, they're both in spirit, so we're not really talking male and female energies, but you know what I mean. So that's part of the balance. And also I asked Jane to go into houses, if I'm going to, because quite often I'm working on a house for a long period of time. I asked her to go in and steady the energy, to hold the energy so that there's not really disruptive, especially if it's a house that's got a lot of spirit trouble. By that, I don't mean necessarily a haunted house. I just mean that there's a lot of chaos within the environment. Then it, I don't want the healing work that I do upstairs to, to cause more upset. And so Jane goes in and kind of steadies it all. So I'll work with her like that. Hi, Sally. Good to see you. We are just closing off. Um, basically last questions from people and then we will just wrap it up i hope that that's given you all some kind of answers and stuff <laughs> sorry you came right in on the end sally uh but you can catch up yeah now uh just pop down any questions and we'll quickly run through them nathan yeah well it may be uh nathan that they don't want to speak to you at the moment <laughs> sorry sally uh, Sally, you might have been put off the, the clocks of change. I don't know whether you're in the UK or USA, but um, Nathan, yeah, don't don't run before you can walk, mate. Work with the guardian if you want to work with the guardian energy. Work with either your spirit guide to start with your personal one, or the one of your house. I mean, you've set up that little menaya in in the in the front garden. Thanks, Jasper. Good boy. Uh, so there'll be a little. There's some elemental. Uh, activity around that already right uh but work with <laughs> right oh no, sally of course you're kent yes of course you are um work with those that are close to you nathan that's the advice jenny do spirit guys come and go uh in our perception they come and go they're they're uh why was i why was i sighing they are um they're always present they always can be present. You see, Merlin, Merthyn is not, the feeling of him is he could be there at any moment. 
the feeling of him now is different to even what it was a year ago. And in fact, Jenny, when you came up and did the workshops, the last workshop that you came up and did with us here, Merton was quite dominant. I mean, he is, you know, he is, isn't he? I mean, he's been coming through today, but he doesn't, I don't feel him come in in the same way. For years, I would feel his presence and he would literally come in there and do that. Now, it just, it just, it's just, it's just there. It's just in. All right. So what does that mean? Does that mean it's not really him? But I hope that helped, David. Um, and the question, Jenny, actually, you see, is we use, we have to use the identifying labels. But the labels are not the essence. Okay. The essence is the moment. That's all it is. So if it's called a spirit guide, the spirit guide, the label spirit guide is a carrier for information but it allows a moment. It enables a moment. Okay. I, I don't know what that means either. I don't know what that means. Yes, right, okay, opens the soul, thank you, right, okay. Okay, cool. Okay, <laughs> I like all those emoticons. Thanks, thoughts and perceptions. Right, we're gonna have to go. Um, cool. Okay, lovely, thank you very much. Um, now, don't all rush around for next week's because, um, I'm actually away over the weekend and I'll be sorting things out on the Monday. So again, we're going to skip next week, but then we'll pick it up again in two weeks time. So we've just had a little intersperse, interspersion. <laughs> we had a little one here today and we'll do it some more. Uh, yeah, good. I hope, hopefully you enjoy that, Sally. Um, cheers, Stevie. Nice to know that you were there. Take care, Summer. Take care, memory bubble. Thanks, JF. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Take it easy. Take it easy, Carol. All right. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Thanks, Julie. See you all. It's been lovely, if a bit weird. <laughs> bye.